Alrighty, so thanks to all of you that took to the OTRS Central Twitter page and tweeted your questions for this q and I'm going to go ahead and dive right in so I can get through as many of these questions as I can. Uh, Jimmy Purifoy starts off, your thoughts on Jamel Hill's Trump comments and what should ESPN do about her and about them? Um, I'll be doing a video on the Schlage Diddy TV channel talking about this very issue very, very soon. So you're going to have to check that out to find out my thoughts on that. Hug life for life. Would Chris Benoit have done it if Eddie Guerrero was alive? Honestly, maybe, maybe not. If the belief that Eddie being alive would have been what it took to get Benoit to not do what he allegedly did, give some of you solace, give some of you comfort, then have it, so be it. I don't buy it. It's just me. And he wasn't, so it didn't matter. Uh, Jimmy asked, would you consider doing another Fuck, Mary Kill game because it's been a few years since you've done one? Yes. And stay tuned. In the future, yes. One's coming. Uh, and then thoughts on Sasha Banks' comments on wrestling fan stalkers. I'm sure she has a point, you know, talking about people stalking at the airport and coming up to them in public and so on and so forth. I, I don't even really think I ever really fully looked at exactly or heard all of what she said. I just... If she said things related to that, I understand it and I get it. And I'm not saying she's wrong. You know, just because they are public figures doesn't mean that they should be, have to be public figures all the time. They should be able to have personal time and privacy as well. And people should be able to respect that. That's all true. But also, this bald headed bitch needs to understand the business that she got into. Knowing that she probably was one of those cats at one point in time. Or thought about it at the very least. Or has been with some other type of celebrity. Um, and, and the honest truth is, is that you know what the hell you're signing up for when you get to that point, you should be happy that people care enough to want to see you in public, want to, uh, wait for your flight at the airport and all this other crap. The day that they don't is the day that you should be worried. And that comes along with being in WWE. You want to do something else where you can live anonymously then go do something else. Ultimately, Punk got tired of this crap, and I think it's still one of many reasons why he got away from WWE. At least he put his money where his mouth was, and he fucking picked up his ball and went home, and he left. He stopped doing it. If it bothers you that much, stop doing it, because don't let the door hit you where you got split, because somebody else could do it just as well, if not better. There will always be somebody else, period. Just ridiculous to me. Jared Orla, who would you like to see signed from the May Young Classic? Some decent-looking women would be a good place to start, and I'm sure they have. I know they have, uh, reportedly, and I've seen some of them, and some of them I like, and some of them like, oh, like even the two finalists. I'm sorry, I don't give a shit. It's because the one girl does that big flying elbow. I'm not, not my flavor. I'll say that. And then the Shane girl. Oh, ugh, ugh, just saying. Well, let's get some better look at women, because that's all I'm saying. A uh, Chisley Bear. What should a college student like myself major in and what will be the hot jobs in five to ten years? Anything in the medical field, uh, whether it be medical technology, um, doctors, nurses, uh, EMT, so on and so forth. Everything related to the medical field is only going to continue to grow over the next five to ten years. That's probably a good place to go into. Uh, also dealing with data, information technology, um, computer programming, all of those things are only going to continue in a digital world to become more and more important. Uh, so those would be fields to be looking at as hot jobs in the future. A uh, college student like yourself, what should you major in? If it's important to you what you major in, then major in something that you can envision wanting to do your entire adult life and being okay with your chosen profession. Otherwise, don't make the mistake that a lot of people do because a lot of people give shitty advice and try to tell them it's important to pick out your major. A lot of times it's not. The reality is it's more important to have the college degree than necessarily what it's in. Some places and employers do care. Many do not. They just say bachelor's degree, preferred qualification, bachelor's degree required, and they don't even specify the field. They just want to see the bachelor's degree, which is, makes it kind of ridiculous in and of itself. So don't spend too many sleepless nights uh, worrying about your major. I'm just saying. There's a lot of cases it doesn't matter. Pro wrestling talk. Will Triple H and Stephanie adopt a son? I, I thought they did. Didn't they adopt a dog a while back? That's probably about the closest their tri- the hunters get to a son. I'm just saying. Oh, Paul, Paul, poor Paul. A horror mo- movie review 73. Why does it seem like Rock and Austin are the only top guys to put others over? What the fuck are you smoking? <laughs> he said Austin was a top guy to put others over. 
I'm a, I'm, I'm sorry. You gave me a good laugh there. Thank you. Thank you. I needed that laugh. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Austin putting people over as the top guy. Child, please. <laughs> the, the top guy that put people over in the Attitude Era was Vince McMahon. He was the real top guy, and he actually did put people over. 1983, Jason. Would you like to see WWE do a big man classic? Absolutely. Got to be six foot plus, 300 plus. I'd be down with it. If you can do a cruiserweight one, if you can do a women's one, why can't we do a big man's classic? Because again, these other things have been done, like your UK tournament, so on and so forth. You could say that was in part to try and find new talent. And this would be another example to find some big man talent. So why not? Uh, the, the market and demographics of the network and the people who watch the network and people who watch these specials probably wouldn't gravitate towards a big man classic. So the company would have to be smart enough to realize it might not be the way to go. But I personally would like to see it. Yes, just to kind of balance things out. You've done these other things. Why couldn't you do this too? Michael Corvin, will either Hardy get a world title run this time around and would you be okay with it? Uh, they could. I don't know if they will, but they could. I um, mean, I'd be okay with it, yes. I prefer to be mad at this point, but I know the company's always had a bigger heart on for Jeff. And then Michael Corvin also asked, why is Jeff more believable as an opponent or as a world champion and or an opponent for Brock Lesnar than Finn Balor and Sami Zayn? I don't believe you've ever heard me say that. I'm pretty sure I would never say that. I don't think I have. And if I have, I was clearly mistaken and clearly misspoke or was taken out of context. No, he wouldn't be more believable as a Lesnar opponent than Balor or Zayn. He is more believable and more exciting as a world champion, that's for sure. And that's because of his name. That's because of the number of years he's been relevant. He is a star. Uh, you know, he feels more appropriate as a world champion than guys like Balor and Zayn. Just saying. Adrian Badass, can you be my wrestling manager? Depends on your gimmick and shtick. Depends on what you want me to do. And ultimately what matters is, am I going to get paid? Because the schleg daddy's not doing any pro bono manager work, just saying. But, if, but someday, you get into the business, you need a manager, give me a holler. Jake Loomis, what would you have done to save WCW? Found a bunch of people that could pull some money together, five plus million dollars, and buy the damn company and pray to God we can find a television network. Rebecca Olson. When did fans start putting so much emphasis on in-ring action? It came in two folds. The militarization of wrestling, where all he would talk about is match ratings and star ratings and all this other crap and his cucking for New Japan. And people subscribe to the newsletter, listen to him, and read his crap over the years and eventually starts to influence them, combined with people like Ric Flair and others trying to justify their spot in the business, doing all these shoot interviews over the years, talking about uh, work rates and who's a good worker and who's not. So people thought of all these guys that we know they get so damn important, then clearly it has to be that important, combined with the lack of massive big stars in wrestling. What the hell else did you ever really have to gravitate to, especially as guys did more cheap thrill flips and kicks and high spot crap? It's all kind of led to this conflagration of the overrating and the overemphasis on in-ring action and not on the other things that actually draw money in professional wrestling. Charles McCain, thoughts on rumors of The Undertaker returning? If he does it at WrestleMania 34 to be the headliner for the Hall of Fame weekend, great. I hope to be there, so that's fine. Other than that, really not interested at this point. Enjoy your retirement, dog. Eaton Beaver, potential future members of the Breakfast Club. Roman Reigns has a strong case. Daniel Bryan is more Breakfast Club killer than Breakfast Club member, but he's kind of married into the thing a little bit, I believe. Um, But is he really a member? I don't know. Uh, Finn Balor, because he's Triple H's butt buddy, apparently, and they need a designated jobber, he might end up in the group. For what reason, I know not why, other than for the real members of the Breakfast Club to feel better about themselves if they say, thank God I'm not Finn Balor. Eric Alex Sandberg, thoughts on Adam Cole? Seems like a nice guy. Really haven't watched a ton of them over the years to have formulated a full opinion. Looking at him, I don't see what's so special about him, but that just could be due to a lack of exposure to him and who he is and what his character is and everything else. Uh, but I'm still wondering what the big deal about guys like Sami Zayn and Finn Balor and others are too, so take that for what it is. Uh, ben1872, WATP. Is anything other than Lesnar and Reigns for the Universal title happening at Mania? No, because this company is so stubbornly, stupidly dug in on this being a good idea. Brother Jonathan, bigger draw. Sasha and Alexa in an Iron Woman match of 30 minutes or in a 10-minute Braun panties match. Clearly, the Braun panties match for 10 minutes would be more interesting and be a bigger draw. So the nerdy fans of today and the company would book the 30-minute Iron Woman match. 
Because stupid, that's why. Antoine, all-time favorite Hell in a Cell match. The first one at Black, Bad Blood 97 between Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker. Ooh, ah, that's his name. Uh, when Cena retires, will he be an all-time great like Hogan, Rock, Austin? I'm going to put it this way. Let's put this shit to bed once and for all. No matter how much propaganda the WWE's put out there, and no matter how much the kids of a decade plus ago have now grown up into adults and tried to uh, put out there that pro Cena diarrhea propaganda, the fact is... When guys like Hogan, Austin, and Rock were at the very top of their powers, you weren't having to cordon off entire upper decks and having to sit there and hide uh, the gaps in the audience. You didn't have half a building show up when those guys were at the height of their powers and at the very top like you do with Cena. The fuck he's an all-time great. Fuck that shit. Yaha al Hadadin. I hope I said that right. Favorite guys on Raw and SmackDown right now? God, that is a great question. On Raw, probably The Miz. On SmackDown, God, who would be the guy on SmackDown? Maybe AJ? Nah, I'll go Rude. Rude, yeah. So Miz on Raw, Rude on SmackDown would be my favorite guy on each brand. Um, The Chosen One GG. Who's more annoying? The fans with their double standards or wrestlers uh, shooting because they're too lazy to do anything else? When it comes to wrestling, as annoying as fans can be and are, anything and everything revolving the business, and in particular the wrestlers, I always gravitate to, towards being much more annoying. When we get to the point where we blame fans for how the business is, instead of blaming the business and the people in the business for how the business is, that to me is the most annoying fucking thing at all. How are you going to pay blame your customers for the crap you do? That's dumb. So that's much more annoying to me. Diabolical Kyle. Do you believe in ghost or an afterlife? Absolutely. In fact, when we first moved into this place, I was having experiences. I was hearing voices. I was seeing shadows out of the corner of my eye. At one point in time, I had three scratches on the back of my leg after I got out of the shower. Um, so yeah, I absolutely do. I've had other experiences over the years too. You know, it's funny. Haven't really had much in the way of experiences over the past couple of years, although uh, especially summer, uh, she will just randomly look at a wall or look at something sometimes like she's looking at someone. So that indicates to me there's probably something there. It's funny, though, at one point in time, I don't know why all of a sudden a lot of the activity that would happen when we first moved in here kind of stopped. I, I think it was one of those things I told I, I said out loud one time. I said, my girlfriend is an absolute fucking demon. Nothing you could do can scare me more than she does. Activity ceased. I think they realized they were playing with a badass bitch that they weren't going to be able to intimidate. And I'm not talking about me either. Don't make me hit, get the big guns. Don't make me get Ashley. Because she'll make you squeal, bitches. SAFC Bungles. Why do smart acts, Smarks act like it's not okay to be attracted to women's wrestling? I don't fucking know. I don't know. You know, it's one of these things of maybe being afraid of being called sexist or whatever, but I don't give a shit. The fact is, it's okay if women are great wrestlers, that's fine. But as a man, I would like to be able to at least tolerate being able to look at a couple of them too. And ironically enough, you can talk about all these talents and this and that. The women that have made the most money in wrestling over the years have been the sex appeal girls. So who the fuck would you rather be? Especially when wrestling is ultimately a man's world, your best way to survive is to make as much money as possible as a woman, however you can. What's the best way to make as much money as possible is doing the sexual crap, doing the feminine stuff. Why in the fuck would you not want to do that? Oh, because I want to be taken seriously. Well, you're making a quarter of what other women in the past did that smartened up and realized what it was and took advantage of it. It's dumb. And Dylan Johnson closes us out. Three guys if you had to pick to start a wrestling company with. You know what? That would require too much thought of me for now. So that's the question I'm actually going to flip around and pose to the audience. Who would be the three guys in any promotion anywhere that you would pick to start a wrestling company with? Let me know in the comments down below. Or you can hit me up on social media and let me know too. I think it's an interesting question. Thanks Dylan for asking. It. That's it for this Q&A. Remember OTR Essential. Not the wrestling show you want. Just the wrestling show you need. And with some of these promotions, sometimes remember I watch so you don't have to. You're welcome. Thank you.